In this video we're going to look at the HX Boost attribute in HTMX and we're going to see how we can use this attribute to progressively enhance an existing website and convert links and forms to Ajax requests that use HTMX. And we're going to see how we can use HX Boost as a mechanism for providing a fallback if a browser or a client does not have JavaScript enabled and therefore cannot use HTMX. We're going to see that in this video, so let's get started. I have here a Django application, and this can be done with any backend, but we have a very simple button here with the text of Get Products. And when we click this button, we want to send an HTMX request and get back a table of products that we want to put into to the page just below that button. So let's go to VS Code and we're going to look at the structure of what we have. Here we have a set of products in the views.py file that are hard coded and these contain two fields, the name and the price of the product. And we have some products here like a MacBook, a car and a camera. And this Django application has one view, it's called index and that renders a template called index.html. And if we look at that template here, then we can see that we have a very simple page that contains the button that we saw on the DOM and we have a div here with an ID of products that is empty at the time when the page is first rendered. Now what we want to do is we want to take the products that are defined and hard coded here in this list and we want to return this partial template here that's in the starter code called product table.html and this is a simple table that contains columns for the name and the price and it loops over a set of products that are in the context and it should render out the name and the price into a table for each one of those products. Now what we're going to do to start with, I'm going to open index.html and we're going to add some HTMX attributes to this button and we're going to start by doing Doing this the normal way where we add an hx get attribute and that calls a view in our Django code and returns that partial template and swaps it into the document. Now we can see that this index template extends a base.html file so let's go there and you can see that we're loading in bootstrap and also htmx from a cdn. So we have htmx available in this starter code so let's get started writing some htmx attributes on this button. So what we want to do is we want to send a get request here and that's going to go to a url that we're going to define in a second called products. So when we click this button, we want to send a GET request to this URL. And when we get an HTML response from Django for this product table partial, we want to swap that into a particular target that we have defined here. And that's the ID of products. That's that empty div just below the button. That's where we want to put the returned content into the document. So we're setting the HX target to this product ID. Let's save this file and we're going to define this products URL now in the Django URLs.py file that we have in the starter code. So let's just copy this path down and our HTMX request for this products endpoint is going to go to a slash products URL and we're going to use a view here that we're going to define in a second called product list and that's going to have the name that we defined in the template called products. So that matches what we had here using the URL template tag. So back to urls.py, what we now need to do is define a view for this list of products. So in order to do that, let's go to views.py and just above the index view, I'm going to define that product list view that will take the Django request object as an argument. And what we want to do here is we want to return the product table.html partial and we want to populate that with the products that are hard coded above. So let's set up a context dictionary here and that's going to have a key of products and that's going to map to those products that we've defined above here. And then I'm going to copy this render statement from the other view and just paste that into this partial view here, this HTMX view. And instead of the index.html template, we're going to return the product table.html. So we're just setting this up the way we normally do with HTMX. Let's save this view here and now we're actually going to test this out and see if it works. So what I'm going to do is go back to the browser and I'm going to refresh this page now that we have those HTMX attributes on this button. And when we click the button, you can see now HTMX sends that request to the back end and the back end is returning that table of products and that's being swapped into our target, which is the empty div with the ID of products. So this is working in the normal manner. But what I want to show is that when we have JavaScript disabled on this browser, this is not going to work. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the browser settings here and I'm using Google Chrome here. If we go to the privacy and security tab, we can go to the site settings option here and then we can scroll down to the bottom and we have this section on JavaScript. We can click that and then disable JavaScript on this browser. So if we do that and then go back to our application and refresh this page, this time when we hit get products, this button is not going to be able to send that HTMX request because JavaScript is now disabled on this site. So you can only 
only use HTMX in a JavaScript enabled environment. What we're going to do now is show an alternative way of doing this using the HX boost attribute. And we're going to see an example of how we might approach progressively enhancing a website with HTMX so that it's more interactive and it becomes more like something like a single page application with React. So in order to show that, I'm going to go back to our template and I'm going to remove this button and replace it with some new HTML here where we have an anchor tag that contains this URL href to the same view that we defined here called product list. So that's going to map to the URL that loads that view just as we did with the button before. But this time we're using a normal anchor tag that does not contain any HTMX attributes. Let's now save this and go back to our page and refresh this page. Now remember JavaScript is not going to work but we're not using HTMX here, we're using the native anchor tag in the browser. So when we click this, you can see that what happens is it loads up that partial template and returns it to us and it does not use HTMX to do that. But what we want to do is we want to use HTMX and we want to boost that anchor tag to use an Ajax request and fetch that content and return it using HTMX. And again, this can be very handy when we progressively enhance a site. So we have anchor tags and forms throughout an existing site. We want to gradually improve the user experience on that site using HTMX. HX Boost can allow us to do that for certain sections of the site. So what we're going to do now is go back to VS Code. And I'm actually going to go back to the base.html file. And the base file has this body tag that encapsulates the entire content that the user can see on the page. What we can do is add the HX Boost attribute to the body tag and set that to true. When we do that, all anchor tags and all forms that are children of this body tag are going to be progressively enhanced. They're going to use Ajax requests when they are clicked and submitted. And as long as JavaScript is enabled on the site, that's then going to use HTMX in order to click those links and submit those forms. So let's see an example now. If we go back to index.html, we have this anchor tag. It just contains the normal href attribute and it does not contain any HTMX attributes. But if we go back to the browser, now that we've added that Ajax boost, equals true to the body and we make sure that we've turned the JavaScript back on on the browser. Now when we click get products you can see that we're getting back the table and this is not doing a normal HTTP request and response. This is using an Ajax request to fetch this table and it's replacing the entire body with the returned partial that contains that table. So when you use HX boost to progressively enhance parts of your site, by default, the target of the response is going to be the entire body of the page. And that's what we see here. The table that's returned is replacing the previous body that we had with the content that's coming back from that boosted request. Now, if we don't want to replace the entire body, we can still add HTMX attributes to this anchor tag. For example, I'm going to set the HX target here. And again, I'm going to set that to the products ID that we had below. That's what we had before. And we're going to see that if we do that and go back to our page and refresh this page, when we click the button, this time the content is swapped into that div with the ID of products, just as it was before. But this is now a boosted request that's using HTMX to send an Ajax request and is returning that HTML content and swapping it in. And if you imagine that we had a site that contains lots of these links to different pages in the application, we can use the HX boost equals true attribute that we've defined here in order to enhance that site and gradually add this interactive functionality to different sections. Now what happens if we go back here and we turn off Java JavaScript again. So I'm setting this to not allow sites to use JavaScript. If we go back to our page and we refresh this page again, this time when we click the button, we're getting back the partial content that contains that table, but we're not getting it back in the correct place because HTMX is disabled now. But using HX boost equals true gives you that fallback of instead of using HTMX, because we have a normal anchor tag here that contains an href to a particular URL, the browser is still able to execute that request as a fallback when JavaScript is disabled. So before we change this, when we had the hx get attribute, when the JavaScript was disabled and we clicked this button, nothing was happening because there was no capability for the request to be sent using HTMX. But now we have that fallback. But the problem at the moment is that when we do send that request, we're only getting the partial back and it's not swapping that content into the right place in the document. So how can we fix this issue where we want to swap the content back into the right place? What I'm going to do in order to do this is install Django HTMX 
which I've previously made a video on, which should be appearing on the screen now. So what we're going to run is the pip install Django HTMX command. That's going to install Django HTMX into our environment. And once we've got that, we're going to go to the documentation for Django HTMX and we're going to look at the installation section, which I will link below the video. What we need to do is add Django HTMX to our installed apps. So let's go back to VS Code and go to settings.py and we're going to scroll down to installed apps and just add that at the bottom. And we also need to add a middleware too. So let's go back to the documentation and it's this middleware here. We're just going to copy that and we're going to paste that at the bottom of the existing middleware list in Django and we can save the settings file and close that now. If we go back to views.py, within this product list view, we're going to check to see if it's an HTMX request that's coming into this view. So after we set the context variable, what I'm going to do is create an if statement here and we're going to check if request.htmx is true. And if it is true, we're just going to proceed as normal and return this partial template to the front end containing that context with our products. So when we have an HTMX request, this view is just going to do what it's doing at the moment, the normal action. But if we don't have an HTMX request, we're going to go down below this if statement. And what I'm going to do here is add a new piece of context to that context dictionary. And that's going to be a key called show products. And when we don't have an HTMX request, we do want to show the products in the parent template. So I'm going to set that to true. And what we're going to return is the same as we're returning from the parent view, the index view. So let's copy the render statement here. And we're going to paste that below here. Now, if you're not following why we're doing this, hopefully it will become clear in a second. What we can then do is go to the index view that's going to be returned from this product list view when we don't have an HTMX request. So we just want to return the same template that we initially load, but we want to populate the products here with the products that are in the context in this particular view here. So let's go back to index.html and I'm going to break this div up and we're going to add an if statement here and we're going to check if that show products variable is true and don't forget to end the if block. Once we've checked that, what we can do is we can use Django's include template tag here. So we're going to include a different partial and that's going to be the product table.html partial. That is the partial that's normally returned on an HTMX request. But in this case, it's a normal request. And when we have this show products set to true, we're going to add the table in here by default. So let's save this and we're going to run the Django server again and go back to our page. So we have the page here and we have JavaScript turned on at the moment. So let's see how this behaves. If we click the get products button, we get the normal behavior where HTMX sends a request to the back end. We return that partial and that partial template is swapped in to our target here. So that's working normally when we have JavaScript on. But if we turn JavaScript off now and go back to the page and we refresh this page, this time when we hit get products, you can see that we are getting getting back a template that contains both the button and also the table below. And this is not being done with an Ajax request because JavaScript is disabled. What is now happening is we're sending a normal HTTP request to the same URL that we define for HTMX. So if we look at that, it's this URL here called products. When we click the anchor tag, the href is set to that URL. And this is a normal HTTP request that comes into this product list view that we defined for the HTMX request. But this time, this if statement will evaluate to false because it's not an HTMX request. And then we set the context of show products and we're returning a different template, the index.html template. And because of that, when we look at the index.html template. This is going to be returned and this show products is going to be set to true. Therefore, the product table will be included in the response for this fallback when JavaScript is disabled. So this is just one scenario, one way of demonstrating how you might handle the discrepancy of when HTMX is sending a request versus when it's a normal request. But in the ideal scenario, pretty much everybody these days should be using JavaScript. So this anchor tag with an href will normally be triggered by HTMX when it is clicked. And that's because the anchor tag has been boosted because we've surrounded the entire body with the HX boost attribute and we're setting that to true. Therefore, all anchor tags such as this one and all forms are going to try and use these Ajax requests unless JavaScript is disabled. So that's all for this video. This video has briefly covered the HX boost attribute and how you can use that to progressively enhance your website that contains normal anchor tags and normal forms. And in scenarios where you want to progressively enhance those elements and submit them using Ajax requests, 
HX Boost can be a nice time saver and it can help you improve and modernize your website. And there are other things we can do with HX Boost. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're enjoying this content and you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to coffee.com in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video.